Hello YouTube, Al here, and this week I thought I'd give you a very basic introduction to blues. Just how it works, what the structure is. So, um, I'm going to ignore all technical terms because I don't know any theory and this is pointless. It's all pointless. Um, this is just for, to get you started, the sounds, to see in your brain where the notes are on the fretboard so you can kind of work out from there and get your bearings. So let's say we're playing blues or rock and roll in A. So fifth fret on the E string, and it's in between the low and the high, so you can move the shape up and down for different keys like G or D or whatever you want. So uh, let me show you some A. I'll do it again with one finger, just so you can see exactly where my finger is. So again, the root is A. See, so the root note, Whatever the root is, the next, uh, the first change, i.e. your next note, is the same fret but one string down. Which in this case is a D. That's the open D, see? This is the D. And then back down to the root again. The second change, sorry, nearly swore, the second change is instead of going the same fret but one string down, it's one string down and two frets up. Ooh. Back to the first change. Back to the first note. And if you want, you can put this on the end. So that's the rough basics of where you put it. So if I just do some bar chords. that makes sense. So um, you can also put some widdly stuff in there to, to flesh it out and at that point now you know where the three chords are. The rest of blues is kind of connecting those chords or different chord voicings. So if instead of going if I go it's the same thing I'm just sort of hitting it a bit, hitting it differently and I'm, I'm freeing up my fingers to move about a bit by fretting my thumb over the top. So just ignore that if you can't do that yet. And that as well. Watch the Captain Lee lick, it's, it's that. So what that is, is the normal bar chord shape but instead I'm fretting it like this so I'm um, the B and E are barred with my index finger and then the uh, middle finger goes on the sixth fret of the G and then above that on the D that's the first shape and the second shape again so we're on A we're, the next note in the uh, progression is the D I'm actually starting one fret up and I'm just sliding down and it's kind of a last instant thing. The note isn't meant to be there, it's just to give you a bit of a sense of movement and to um, make sound a bit off or a bit jarring. Uh, and the chord shape, I'm just doing it with my root finger. And then it's kind of like a G shape, so a bit like that. So it's your middle finger on the fifth fret of the D and then your index fingers on the sorry, the A, then your index fingers on the D string, one fret behind that, and then the other fingers uh, are barring the B and the E at, again at the fifth fret. So all your fingers are on the fifth fret, except your index finger on the D, which is one behind, and you get this sound. Ooh. You can bar the G as well, to be fair. It's just a different sound. This one, or not 
play the, the G at all. Or bar it. But that's the first change, and that's the same uh, shape that you do for the second change. And it's just from the middle you slide up, as opposed to sliding down. So it's. Hendrix shape here, which is the same as what we just did, except the B string, the highest note in this shape, is one fret up, it's not all in a line. Oh, oh it's on the G, sorry. Play it there, or if you want the sourness, it's fifth on the A, fourth on the D, fifth on the D, and sixth on the G. That's the same note, Jimi Hendrix, uh, shape, sorry, Jimi Hendrix uses in Purple Haze, and he plays it here. But it sounds different, because obviously the, the, the B string isn't sort of fifth fret, next one down, fifth one. It's, it's the one that's out of that sequence, so it's a little bit, you know. It's the fourth, not the, not the fifth fret. So that's why it's one fret higher. If that makes sense, you've got to always add another one. If that makes sense. So learn that Hendrix shape, let me do that close up. So it's on the seventh of the G, uh, sorry, seventh of the A string, six, six on the D, G string uh, seventh again, and then eighth on the B. Put a bit of vibrato in there because that's always fun. That's a very, very, very common shape you'll find in blues. So you can use that as the very last change when you just, you want to hit the second change note just for a laugh. So, you know. See what I mean? And also when you do the blues, um, that, that shape you don't need to hit all of the strings you can just hit the top three so that would be just fifth fourth fifth that isn't doing anything this is just muting the low e and that works on the low e string as well because the intervals between the strings are the same it's fifth frets the next one down so that still works so you can go And again, I'm just using this middle fret to, or to add a little bit of flavor. So you can use that at your own discretion to just add a little bit of um, sauce, bit of curry sauce to the riffs that you're doing, you know? And that is the last one, as opposed to. But you can use it with chord shapes, power, sh uh, power chord shapes. You can go, again, that's just five, four, and five and move that down one, and it's the, t it, it, it's the same shape, but again, second change. And if you add your little finger to cover the B and E as well, so the, B, the, the E, B, and G are all barred at the fifth fret, the D is at the fourth fret, and again, the root, which is on the A string, is at the fifth. You've got the same, same chord, just less, less of the note. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a basis to work from. Um, to remember the basic structure. You know how blues goes. You've heard blues songs before. You can work out a hell of a lot just from that. But just remember it's root. First for change. Second. And hopefully from there, that should, um, that should give you a basis to work from. I also learned this I want to show you very quickly, but I can't really explain it yet.
So yeah, it's that weird that weird riff, uh, riff I lick I worked out. <laughs> It's just back to the pentatonic, which is an A, and this is playing through the changes. So you can you can kind of feel the change that I was doing, even though I wasn't playing rhythm. So hopefully that kind of helps you work that out as well. Again, I just learned that like last night. I'm still kind of drinking that in, uh, fitting that into what I already know, which is the thing I stole from Mick Taylor of that pedal show. Ooh. That's another shape you can do. So there's the A and the D is here. So it's ninth fret on the A, 10th fret on the D, 9th on the G again, and 11th, sorry, 10th again on the B. And I start one fret up and just, again, shove it down because it gives that sense of kind of off time sort of movement. So again, I hope that helps. It's just some blue stuff that I've been dicking about with, really. Listening to Kirk Fletcher, Josh Smith, uh, Philip Sace is a big one. Matthew Scott, his channel's fantastic. Nick Seveny, his channel on YouTube is fantastic. Just, um, this is stuff that's kind of all just osmosed into my brain from what I've been listening to. And I'm just things I've picked up. So hopefully that helps you get a bit of a basis on what the structure of blues is if you want to get into playing blues. I'm still learning these riffs basically. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. Uh... So, if you want to learn blues, I'd say some good places to start are Kirk Fletcher's YouTube channel and Instagram. Fantastic. Great player. Seems like a really lovely bloke. Um, lots of lots of cool blues players out there, obviously. Um, I hope this has been helpful. I'm going to try and stop saying um now, but that's what I've been working on. That's the sort of thing that's been going around in my head when I don't have a guitar in my hands, if you know what I mean. And hopefully that's taught you a bit of basic blues uh, framework so you can kind of experiment from that and hopefully you can use that to reverse engineer stuff you already know because I think that's where most of the learning takes place, at least for me. So I hope it's been helpful. I don't normally do lessons on this channel, to be honest, but I do so many pedal reviews and fix it, so I thought I wanted to do something a bit different. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe if you found it interesting. Leave any questions or comments down in the comment section because other people hopefully will find this video and they'll find it helpful and we can all learn and share. And remember when YouTube used to say broadcast yourself? I miss those days. Let's bring that back. So thanks for watching. My name, my name is Al. Um, I'm rambling at this point. I'll see you next week. Until then, bye-bye. Bye! -bye. bye.